So I shoot primarily with prime lenses and I'm shooting with very wide apertures. And so I'm gonna have that natural like blurriness to begin with. But if you are looking to achieve that effect and you are not getting it out of camera, what is so awesome now with the recent additions in Lightroom is that you can do this with the lens blur tool. So I want to show you that, and this is a pretty good image to show that effect on because in this case, I was shooting this with a fisheye lens, so I didn't have the um, prime lenses that I usually use in terms of shooting really, really wide open. I think my aperture is probably still around four here, but it doesn't have as much of the blurred background as you may see in, say, like an image like this. So, and remember, these are all out of camera, all natural, available light. So let's start with this image. The very first thing I wanna do, because it's just distracting, is fix that back around um, the horizon line there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just straighten things out a bit. I'm gonna, very simple adjustment. I want to make some global adjustments here before I show you the lens blur, just so we can get a nice overall sort of feel to our image. Let's see if we can try some of our adaptive subject presets because we know we've worked on our adaptive skies. So let's see what happens with our adaptive subjects. That warm pop looks really nice to me for the beach. Let's see what soft looks like. That's not really adding anything too dramatic. Very subtle, cool, soft, vibrant, too dark for me, glow way too bright for me. Pop's not bad, but I like that warm pop. So let's go ahead and click on the warm pop and I'm going to go ahead and reduce the amount a bit because I don't want it to skew too too, too warm, so right around there it looks good. And that kind of just gives you a little sense of what the adaptive subject presets will look like. Very subtle, but can also be powerful. I'm now going to go ahead and make some global adjustments. Let's pop into the shadows. These are some of the things I do in all of my images that I then set as presets. So it makes my workflow very, very quick. However, I'm gonna, for the sake of instruction, show you what I do here. Lift my blacks a little bit, drop my clarity slider, counterintuitive to what you probably pretty much think about clarity where you're using it for sharpness. I like to drop it so I get more of that dream-like effect and that looks really quite lovely to me. So now I'm gonna drop down to my color mixer. This is where you're going to find your HSL panel, the hue, saturation, and luminance when selected to mixer. And so I'm going to make some adjustments to color, which will help me kind of get more playful and kind of increase the mood of this overall image. I have a lot of mauve here in her dress, so I can kind of go ahead and play with this here. The only problem is when I have colors that are similar to um, skin tones, obviously this is a global effect. So I have to be cautious here as I make my adjustments because it's going to also affect the skin. So for example, if I lift the brightness, which is the luminance that refers to the brightness or darkness of a color and image, that also is gonna affect our skin tone. So I just wanna be conscientious of that as I do this because everything is going to be affected. So if I saturate, you see the skin is also saturated like the lips and the hair. Sometimes this can be flattering. In this case, I'm not minding her lips getting a little bit more rosy. So I'm just gonna lift to the right a bit for my saturation. I'm gonna keep my hue as it is. That has to do with the color, the tone of the particular image. So when you adjust hue, you're really shifting the color towards a different color. So in this case, for example, I'm shift, I would be shifting it toward more of that hotter pink, whereas in this case to the right, I would be shifting it more toward the um, orange goldish color there. So I wanna keep my luminance as is. The other color I wanna play with here is going to be with the blues, and that's going to be um, something that I can be more liberal with because I'm not having as much blue in her um, skin tones that's gonna to be affected. So I can now go ahead and really saturate the sky. You can see that here, and I can go ahead and play with the luminance if I want to. So let's do that a little bit there. So just a little bit overall affecting the image. I think I'd like to add another gradient as we did in the previous image, just to add a little bit more of that texture to the sky. So if I go ahead and go in my layer mask here and I create a new mask, I'm going to select my linear gradient and I'm going to go ahead and drag the gradient down. I'm not gonna spill onto her hair. So we're just gonna come down a bit and I'm gonna just play here and try. So what happens if I warm, I'm gonna go lighter into that pastel, which is kind of a fun variation because it's playing off of the sort of juxtaposition of the sun that's coming in here as it's setting 
or I can go cool and really, really add a little bit more color and pop. Let's go ahead and keep it in the cool range. I can also swing it again toward the magenta, which is gonna give me that purple hue or more toward an aqua tone because I'm mixing now the green in that tint. I don't wanna do either, so I'm gonna leave it as is on the zero, and of course I can saturate that as such as well. So. Um, keeping that also at the zero. So now we've already added quite a bit of color, which is a few sliders. You'll see here's where we were before, here's where we are now. I want to show you that lens blur effect because that's where we're gonna start to add a little bit more emphasis to my subject as described. I'm going to scroll down here to the new lens blur feature and you're going to find that all the way at the bottom, lens blur. So I hit apply here and what's gonna happen is it's going to go ahead and analyze my image to apply that blur effect. And then I'm gonna be able to make adjustments as to how much I want that effect to take place. So you'll see now the analysis took place and you can see where now my subjects is the parents in the water. And that's why I'm keeping them here. If these were just like random people, I probably wouldn't even want them in my image. But this is part of the story I'm trying to tell. I have the subjects here in the background. I can just blur them out, but now she really emerged from the portrait so if you look at what this looks like without the application versus with the application that's a really really amazing tool you can affect the overall blur amount by using the slider I can crunch it up to the right it's going to be more dramatic if I take it down to the left it's going to be less dramatic this is really taking into account sort of depth of field so keep that in mind anything that's going to be within the same plane as the subject is not going to blur out in the same way as those I, um, items or textures or people in the distance and that's on purpose obviously that's the natural effect of using a prime lens and shooting at a wide aperture that's what this is trying to simulate so you have different bokeh options here and how to do that this is going to be a circular that's a modern circular lens that's what I use and so that's what looks natural to me if I switch this over to the next option here it's going to create you can see these little different um, bubbles, it's a, a circular shape that I don't find to be too beautiful, but this could look really cool if you have lights in the background. So that's where you can kind of play on different images to see the different bouquet effects. And then they have what's called this um, five blade effect. And again, I won't take up too much of your time with these different um, options, but know that they are there. I'm gonna keep it on the circular modern. The other thing to take into account is that you get a visual depth here. Um, this is kind of cool too. But if I click on visual depth, what this is going to do for me is provide me now with a depth map of the image where I can see that the warm colors are gonna represent those areas that are in focus, whereas the cool colors will represent areas that are out of focus. So we have all the warmth there. We know this is all in focus. It's a really, really neat visual to show you the focus range. So as the warm colors fade away into more cool colors, you can see what is out of focus. If I wanted to change my image and blur certain elements, this would help me to decide what else to put into focus versus out of focus based on um, this depth map. So let's say now that I want to go ahead and bring my subjects back in fo focus. I click on the visual depth map and I see that, oh wow, this is really out of focus, completely blurred and I don't want it to be, which is obviously not the case. <laughs> but all I need to simply do is go ahead and click on focus. And now I can adjust my focus level. I haven't done anything yet. This would just be like how much I wanna add on. And I can go ahead now and just click, you know, right on my subjects. I can go ahead and increase them even more if I want now, bring them back in focus. This is certainly not something I'm looking for in this image. There could be potential uses for this kind of artistry, especially something in advertising, something where you're trying to bring certain elements in your background into sharp focus, whereas other elements of the background you want to keep blurred and natural. So it's a pretty cool option to have it there, despite the fact that obviously I would want this to be fully blurred to match the element of the rest of the scape here so that it is more natural. So that's a really cool way to look at the lens blur. I just wanna finalize this image. I wanna run just a little bit of a vignette here. I'm gonna use a post-cropping vignette even though I haven't really cropped 
much, but this will afford me the opportunity to have the option to here. So I'm just gonna darken things out because what that helps me do obviously is isolate my subject even more by um, adding that. Now look, here's how dramatic it would be, it even lends itself more to the fisheye, right? I don't like that look, but it shows you what it looks like. So I'm gonna bring down that vignette a bit. Now we're helping to spotlight. I'm gonna go ahead and add a mask here and it's just gonna be a brush mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and first um, select with a large brush my subject. I'm gonna just brush on her a little bit here. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and add a bit into the shadows, a light. So it's kind of like a spotlighting effect and a little bit more into the exposure and now we've brightened her up. So some very, very subtle adjustments, but it took us from here to here. Elevate your photo editing skills at the Kelby One Lightroom Conference. Learn from the experts and transform your photography. Sign up at kelbyonelive.com.